everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome to um, my channel here. I'm gonna be doing way more SAT videos in preparation for the August SAT. So if you're planning on taking your SAT this fall, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm also going to link my TikTok down below. I have a wonderful community there um, where I post um, an SAT problem almost every day. So if you wanna get that practice in, make sure you check that out down below. Okay, let's jump right into today. So we're gonna be talking about functions today. And the way that I teach this is a little bit not traditional, I would say. I always think of, when I'm doing functions, I think of a factory where I'm gonna have some sort of an input going to the factory. The factory's gonna take whatever I input, do something with it, and give me an output. And so I like to teach this thinking about athletes, right? So here I have little Christian Ronaldo, who is an aspiring soccer player. He's gonna go into this factory. He's gonna follow some secret regimen, you know, whether it's like practicing every day, whatever it is, he's gonna follow this regimen and, and the secret formula. And then the output is Christian Ronaldo, the superstar athlete soccer player that we know today. Now, if we take little Kylie Jenner and we have her follow this, we put her into the same factory, have her follow the same regimen, you're not going to get Christian Ronaldo as your output. You're gonna get some other version of Kylie, most likely a billion dollar Kylie that we know today, but slightly different if she followed Christian's routine. So that's just to help you visualize kind of what functions are and how you work with them. So let's actually do this with numbers. So anytime you're given a function, you're, you're gonna get something that looks like this. You're gonna get f of x is equal to something. And that, that something is your formula. So here we have f of x is equal to 3x plus two. So that 3x plus two is what the factory is gonna do with whatever number we're putting in. And so your input is always going to be x, and your output is going to be f of x, which is basically a fancy way of saying, if I take x, I plug it into this formula, I'm gonna get some output and it's referred to as f of x. So let's look at it with actual numbers so we can get some a tangible feel of what you do with these. So if you're looking for f of four, that means my input is four, right? So I'm gonna input four into the secret formula that I had, which was three x plus two. So anywhere that I see an x, I'm replacing it with a four. So I'm gonna put parentheses around that. So we get three times four plus two, and that's gonna give me 14. So f of four is actually just 14. So again, your input is that f of whatever, this little value x here is that, that's your input. And you're gonna put that in and plug that in for x and you're gonna get an output. Okay, so let's do an actual SAT practice problem with functions. I think this is a very simple one just to get your feet wet um, and then we're gonna move on to more challenging ones. Okay, so this one says the function f is defined by f of x is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 6. What is the value of f of 4? So same thing, my plug-in value, my x value is going to be the one that's in the parentheses, 4. So everywhere that I have an x, I'm going to replace it with a 4. My, my recommendation is always to put parentheses because these can get a little tricky if you forget your parentheses. So let's plug it in. We get 4 squared minus 5 times 4 plus six. So four squared is obviously 16, right? Four times four, minus 20 plus six. Simplifying that, I get minus four plus six. So f of four is equal to two. My answer is B. Simple, straightforward, plugging in, simple plug in, whatever they give you, it's just a fancy way of saying X is four, right? That's a fancy just way of writing that X is equal to four. Okay, next one. So here we have one where we have multiple variables. So let's take a look at our secret formula, right? It says g of x is equal to ax squared plus 24. And so a lot of people are gonna get nervous because they see a lot of variables. This is actually a classic SAT problem. If you learn this now, you won't get stumped on the SAT. So here I see that I have that additional variable a. So I have an x variable and an a, and I'm like, what do I do with a? I didn't have that in the last problem, right? And they're telling me that g of four, so if when, when x is equal to four, I get the value eight. So what is the value when x is negative four? Okay, so let's take what they give us and work with that and see if we can find a. So if I plug in x, x is equal to four, right? I should get the value of eight at the end. So I'm plugging in just like in any equation you plug in. So I have a times four squared plus 24 is gonna give me eight. 
Okay, let me simplify. So 16a plus 24 is equal to 8. I'm going to take that 24, bring it to the other side. I get 16a is equal to 8 minus 24. 16a is equal to negative 16. Be careful there with your negatives. a is equal to negative 1. Cool. So now I found out that I can rewrite g of x because I know what a is now, right? So that, that little fact that they give us early on kind of allowed us to find that a. So g of x is equal to, well, now I know a is negative 1, x squared plus 24. Great. What do I do now? Well, now they're asking me, well, what's g of negative 4? When x is negative 4, what do we get? Okay, well, now I'm just going to plug in negative 4. So be careful with your plug in here with your parentheses like always. So we have negative 1 times negative 4 squared, parentheses, plus 24. Okay, so I get negative 1 times 16 plus 24. So negative 16 plus 24. So g of negative 4 gives me 8. My answer is a. Okay. Okay, this one's a little different. So here I'm being given two functions, two secret formulas to work with. And anytime you have two, you usually have one inside the other. And in this case, I notice that h of x is equal to one minus g of x. And I'm like, okay, so anytime I have that, I'm gonna rewrite that second one by plugging in whatever g of x is. So let's do that first. We have h of x is equal to one minus g of x. Well, what's g of x? g of x is two x minus one. I'm going to use my parentheses to keep this nice and clean. So h of x is equal to 1 minus parentheses 2x minus 1. And here's why it's important to have those parentheses, because we need to distribute out this negative now. So we get h of x is equal to 1 minus 2x, negative 1 times a negative 1 gives me plus 1. So now I have my h of x, and my question's asking me, okay, Michelle, what's h of 0? Well, all I have to do is plug in 0 for x. So I get 1 minus 0 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 minus 0 is obviously just 2. My answer is D. Okay, let's take it one step harder, right? One, one additional step. So this one says a function f satisfies f of 2 is 3, f of 3 is 5. A function g satisfies g of 3 is 2, g of 5 is 6. What is the value of f of g of 3? Anytime you have a fun being asked to find a function within a function, like you are here, that f of g of g of 3. Confusing, right? Not really. It's actually very simple. Start from the inside of the parentheses. So if I have f of g of 3, I'm going to say, okay, what is g of 3? Did they give me that? Well, they told me g of 3 is 2. So, okay, g of 3 is 2. So now what am I finding? I'm finding f of 2. Well, do they give me f of 2? They absolutely do. F of two is three. So F of two is three. My answer is three. So that was my quick functions review. If you guys like that, make sure you give me a little like down there um, and stay tuned for our future SAT videos. I'm gonna try to do one on every topic. So if you have one topic that you don't like, comment down below. See you guys next time. Bye.